All right, Jason, we're gonna look at the fundamental that looks at spin rate. And so the two main factors that we're looking at with spin rate are club speed and spin loft. I mean, that's gonna be the two primary factors and what generates the spin rate. So we'll go ahead and have you hit a few shots here and then kind of take a look at the numbers and talk about what you're trying to look at when you're generating the trajectory that you wanna see. Sounds good. All right, Jason, that's pretty consistent there. Let's take a look at the numbers. So, I mean, it's pretty interesting what we can look at. So we talked about spin loft and club speed being the two primary factors. And if we look at your first shot here, you've got a club speed of 91 miles per hour, spin loft of 28 degrees. If we go to your second shot, 91.7, 28.5, and then 92 and 28. So, I mean, they're almost identical. If we look at some of the other numbers, if we go back to number one, we've got 15.7 launch and 6,800, 15.4 and 6,500, 15 and 6,600. I mean, if we look, the, look at the grouping here, we can look at the carryover on the left-hand side. They're pretty much identical shots. So, I mean, what is it that you're concerned about when you're trying to get your trajectory correct as far as spin rate goes? Yeah, uh, a couple of things that I look at, um involve the launch angle, uh, the spin rate, and the height. So with launch angle, what I'm trying to do is I hit a seven iron there. Uh, this has 32 degrees of loft. For my launch angle, I'm trying to get roughly half of that loft. Um, so, you know, we're right at 15, which is pretty, pretty close. Uh, for me, that shows that I'm launching the ball consistently at the same angle. And then with spin rate, I try to get that locked in at about a thousand um, revolutions for every number on the club. So with a seven iron, we're looking at somewhere around 7,000, give or take. And then one thing that's really key for me is total height. I don't think a lot of people look at this, but with total height, that's where that ball is apexing at every time. So if we went through the bag, pitching wedge through my four iron or my three iron, my, my hybrid will be a little bit higher. I want that launch and that height to be exactly the same every time. So that ball is peaking at that same window and then what I'm using to stop it is my spin rate and my land angle. And with that, I can get more consistently uh, distance control. As you can see, I've got 76, 78, 77 with three shots. So I know that that ball is gonna go the same distance because it's launching at the same height, it's spinning at the same rate, and the apex of it is the same every shot I hit. What, what is it that you do in your swing or your practice? I mean how do you become consistent? What is it that you're trying to work on to generate that consistency? Uh, you know, that, that's a tough question to answer. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of practice. Um, I think with the track man being introduced a while ago, you can really get these numbers locked in. It's been a lot of trial and error. Uh, this works, this doesn't work. Um, but, um, you know, in my swing, I've got a lot of lag. My attack angle's a little bit down on it, but I can consistently get that club to react the same at impact every time. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting what you say. You know, you talk about your launch angle trying to get that number consistent. I mean, by getting that launch angle consistent, you should be generating the same spin loft, unless you're changing your attack angle a lot, which I wouldn't expect with a player like you. If your spin loft is the same with a good player, generally you're gonna expect the launch angle to be the same. So it's, it's pretty interesting that you use the launch angle and spin rate to generate the, the same topic or discussion that we've been looking at.